Okay, let's now learn about how do you express one determinant as a sum of two or more determinant. Now many a times you might come across certain determinants, let's say for example, I'm taking variables here because that is going to kind of be helpful. Now if you refer to this particular determinant A, all the elements of row 1 are expressed as a sum of two variables. So if, let's say for this case you have x plus 3 alpha. So there's a variable x and there's a variable 3 alpha out here. Here you have y plus 3 beta. So in such a case what you can always do is and the other two rows we are not uh, talking about them. So what you can do in these cases is you can express this first determinant A as a sum of two determinants, let's call them as B and C, right? Such that B is equal to the first part of all these three variables. So basically, in this case, you can express B as the first variable, which is X, Y, and Z, okay? And in the second matrix, what you can do is, sorry, not in the second matrix, second determinant, you can put in the second variable. So you put in 3 alpha, 3 beta, okay? And you can express this as a sum of these two. Insofar as the second and the third row are concerned, you can put them as it is. But please notice that these will come in both the determinants. Right? So basically the first row has been broken down into two parts wherein the first variables have been put into the first matrix, sorry first determinant and the second part has been put in the second determinant. Row 2 and row 3 remains common for both of them. And if you take down and solve these variables, you will notice that the variable A or debt A is equal to debt B plus debt C. Let's take an example to prove this. So let's say you have A is equal to 6, 8, 10, okay? And here you have, let's say for example, 2, 4, 6, and here you have 0, 2, 4. Right? Now, this can also be written as 0 plus 6, okay? 2 plus 6 and 4 plus 6. And let's say you have 2, 4, 6, you have 0, 2, 4. Right? Now in this case what has happened is that the first row has been expressed as x plus y, x1 plus y1, x2 plus y2. So going by what I told you above, you can write this as 0, 2, 4, which is first part of here, first part of here and first part of here. Then 2, 4, 6, 0, 2, plus 6, 6, 6, 1, 2, 3, 2, 4, 6, and 0, 2, 4. So the second row and third row remains common for both these determinants. Right? Now let's see whether the value of this determinant A is equal to the sum of the value of these two determinants and whether this property holds true or not. So let's solve it for A. So you have 6,
Okay, so you have six. So let's see whether this property holds true. Let's call these two matrix as B and C, right? What we need to see is even after the split of A into B and C whether the value remains the same. So let's say we write A as value using the column or sorry the row third. Using R3 the value of determinant A will be 0 into something where because this is the first element which doesn't matter so we ignore this minus 2 so if you use 2 this goes off and this goes off so you use 6 2 10 and 6 plus 4 last column this goes this goes you use 6 2 8 and 4 so minus 2 into 6 into 6 36 minus 10 into 2 20 plus 4 6 into 4 24 minus 8 into 2 16 minus 2 into 16 plus 4 into 8 minus 32 plus 32 is equal to 0 so we've got debt a equals to 0 let's see about b and c now if you notice in B, row 1 and row 3 are same, 0, 2, 4, 0, 2, 4, they are identical. And we know that if in a determinant any two row are identical, then the value of that determinant, let's say determinant B, is equal to 0. So we've got B equals to 0, let's find out C. So for C we use third row because again you have a 0 out here. So C will be equal to 0 into something. We're not doing that again because it will be 0. Next, minus 2. So when 2 is used, this is not used, so you get 6, 2, 6, 6. Plus 4. When you use 4, this is gone along with this. You are left with only this. Right? So you get minus 2 into 6 into 6, 36. Minus 2 into 6, 12. Plus 4. 6 into 4, 24, minus 6 into 2, 12, minus 2 into 24, plus 4 into 12, minus 48, plus 48, is equal to 0. So even C is equal to 0, B is equal to 0, and A in any case is equal to 0. Hence, we can easily conclude that debt A is equal to debt B plus debt C. Right?